Welcome back guys, it's craft time. In today's video, we are going to be making a unique guest book using a 24 inch round, um, wood round and sublimation. Let's go ahead and get started. married and they really wanted to have a unique wedding guest book, something for people to sign that they can actually do something with in the future. They didn't want something that they, people would sign and that they would just stick in a drawer for years to come. So we came up with an idea of something that they can hang on their wall. I had made them um, a couple wooden rounds before prior to this for some other home decor and we just thought that it would be very fitting to make another one. The idea that I had was to take one of their engagement pictures and sublimate that onto the wood round, put their names and their wedding date on there, and then have people sign around it. She loved that idea, so we got to work with picking the correct image and moving forward with creating this. I will try to link this wood round in my affiliate links through Amazon. However, I did order it a while ago, so I don't know if I'll still be able to find it. If I can, you'll be able to find it there. I wanted to start with going ahead and staining this wood round. I used the Verathane wood stain in the color Flagstone. This is it. It's kind of like a brownish grayish tint. And I just stained the front and the back and let that sit and dry. With a stain, you just want to put it on going with the wood grain if you can and then wiping away any of the excess with an old t-shirt or a paper towel and then just let it dry. And then I went ahead and sealed this with polycrylic. Now I use polycrylic on any of my wood pieces anyway. However, since I will be sublimating on, it's even more important that I use the polycrylic because that's what's going to help the piece, um, the image press into the wood. So after I got that sealed, it was time to go ahead and create our design. I went in on my Cricut Design Split space, I uploaded the two pictures that we were kind of going back and forth with, and I was wanting to do kind of like a, like a brush stroke type of background for it, and I was actually able to find a heart that was kind of like a brush stroke that I could slice the photo with, and it worked out really, really well. So I took the um, image of that like brushed heart, the image of the picture that we were using and I sliced, I layered them over top of each other where I wanted to, highlighted both of them, used the slice tool, hit that, and then deleted all of the parts I didn't need. I sent her the options and we both decided that we, on the picture that we really loved, and I printed that out on my A-sub sublimation paper using my Epson printer, and then I was ready to prep the board. To prep the board, I wanted to make sure I had a good white background. That way the picture would really show up and didn't kind of lose too much detail if it was just on the plain wood. So I used some white acrylic paint and I kind of, um, I used some carbon paper and a pencil to trace the outline of the picture to kind of know where it would go. That way I could paint within that area and make sure it had a really good white base. And after I was done with that, I sealed it with three coats of the polyacrylic. I did, um, I wouldn't say a thin coat, like a decent coat, let it dry, um, sanded it, let a decent coat, let it dry, sanded, lightly sanded it, and then another coat. And then I actually let that sit for like two days. Not necessarily on purpose, I just got busy. But I do suggest that you let that polyacrylic um, really have some time to set, um, at, I mean, at the minimum, <laughs> several hours, um, I would say 24 hours, just to make sure that it's not going to cause any trouble or peeling or um, anything whenever you're actually applying the heat. I apologize. Um, I've done some sublimation on wood before. If you haven't seen my video, um, go check it out. It's literally called sublimation on wood, um, to where I kind of was like testing out some different ways to do it. So I was kind of using the knowledge that I used from there to apply to this method to try to see what I can get to work. I am doing a black and white photo, so the white background is just really gonna let those different tones, you know, whites, grays, blacks show since there's not really any big pop of color. And I, like I said, I let it sit. After that, I did want to, I just put some like heavy stuff around on on the all of the edges because I was scared that the the, it's pretty thin, but I was scared that that wood round was going to um, warp up a little bit. So I just added those heavy things around the edges, and then I was ready to go ahead and press my picture. 
For this, I'm using my Cricut Easy Press. I'm doing this because this round is so big that it's not gonna fit in my actual press. So I'm gonna heat it up to 380 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm gonna set my time for 60 seconds. While my timer is, or sorry, while my heat press is heating up and getting ready, I'm gonna take some of my heat tape, get my picture placed where I want it to and tape it down. That way it doesn't move and go ahead and cut out some butcher paper. Once it's ready, I'm gonna put my butcher paper down and go ahead and apply the heat press and press start and it's going to count down for me. I'm doing my very best to hold it very still and not move while putting a light pressure on it and just letting it sit there for the 60 seconds. And once it's done, I removed the, the heat press off to, back to the side and removed the image. Now, the image transferred beautifully. I will say I, in the moment, was just trying to get um, the image off because for everything else I sublimate on, I try to remove the image right away just to prevent like overheating or anything. But I forget that with the wood and with the paint, you want to let the image cool. That way you're not peeling the paint back with it. I happened to get lucky and it didn't really tear um, any of the image. There were some slight parts that I did have to adjust a little bit and, um, and fix a little bit, but it sublimated beautifully, but it burnt the stain. So I don't like to learn lessons apparently. Um, if you are a follower, you know that a couple videos ago, I was working on this little sign. I stained it, or I basically used Waverly Wax to stain it. And then after that decided, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some wood burning on this project. Not thinking about how I had just put that wax stain down and how heat just melts it and it was kind of chaos. Well, with this, I put the heat on the stain and it scorched it. So now I have this lovely square <laughs> burn mark in the woods, which, in the wood, which, sorry, Leah, if you're watching this, I kind of messed it up and I hit it. So what I'm going to do is take my chip brush and dry brush on a halo of kind of like those matching strokes to kind of hide all of that, which I think ended up looking really good and like giving it a little bit more character. Um, but I just kind of went through to what I thought looked good, which mostly hit it. And then after that, I took my Cricut, I did their last name, I did their date that she would ask me, and I just did the colors to what I think would look good. And I am trying out the Dollar Tree um, vinyl on this to create a stencil. So I actually have some of this because I made big, like I used the foam poster boards. I made huge letters for words, um, just for like a, literally a sign that was gonna be used for one day. And I will say that the vinyl worked great for that on the washi sheet setting, if it's gonna be very large images. So I thought, you know what, let's just go ahead and give it a try while we're doing this. And it was okay. Um, it kind of ripped some of the letters as it was actually cutting. And then it um, weeded okay, I guess, but it was not sticking enough to where when I was weeding, everything was kind of shifting around. And since this was somebody's wedding, a wedding gift and their wedding guest book, I didn't want to take any risks with that and like trying that out. So I just went to my true and tried my contact paper so it's literally contact brand is what it's called and it's just this cheap white contact paper that i had bought off of amazon for a project that i ended up not doing and i felt like it was a waste just sitting there so i started trying it out for stencils and you do have to have a little bit of patience and you can't use like the cricut standard um transfer tape because it's too sticky so I have this like masking tape kind of um, transfer tape that I love and it's just sticky enough to hold things in place. But when you take it off, it doesn't rip any of your background paint. You don't have to worry about it over being over sticky or anything like that and it's amazing. So I use the contact paper with the washi, the fine, um, the fine point cutter and the washi sheet setting and it cuts beautiful stencils for me every single time. It weeds beautifully, now it doesn't stick a ton, so if it's a really small area, I do have to kind of hold it in place or replace it. And then I just put my stencil down where I want it. Now, if you're new to stenciling, you definitely want to, if it's a painted, use that background color, or you can always just use a clear, I like to use Mod Podge, um, and do your first stencil set 
in that clear color or the matching background color so that you can seal up all of the edges of that stencil so any of the bleeding that happens will either match the color of your background or it'll be clear and you won't be able to see it. So I just go over, some people dab, some people swirl, I do whatever in the moment I feel. If I feel like my stencil is really secure, then I like to swirl because I feel like I get the best coverage with my stencil um, brushes. Other times I know that the contact paper, you know, if there's like parts that I know be a little thin or a little sensitive, I dab in those areas so I'm not shifting things around. I let that Mod Podge dry. I do use my heat gun on low way up. just. A little bit to help start the process and then I leave it because you can if you're gonna use the contact paper you can um, I wouldn't say melt it but it will kind of wave on you if it gets overheated so once that's dry completely I just use whatever colors I'm doing and I typically do two coats I do one good one let it dry do a second one to make sure I didn't miss any areas and then you can just pull that right off with this I typically pull it off while it's still wet, but I didn't quite get to it in time. And I did peel some of my words off. I have a steady hand, so that's not a big deal to me. Um, and I went ahead and just used a small detailed brush and painted all those letters back on in the areas I needed to. And that was it for this. I just sealed it back all back again with the polycrylic to make sure that there was not gonna be any issues with um, any of the painted letters or anything, scrape it off or their image and everything was good. I also did it because we're going to be just using Sharpies or like permanent markers, not paint pens or anything. And I wanted to make sure there was no bleeding into the wood if it had plenty of sealer coats to where they'd be riding on that top layer, not the actual like raw wood that would just absorb and smear the ink. And I love this. I She loved it, which is most important. And everybody signed their names on it. It worked out beautiful. It's unique. It's something she can actually hang in her house instead of just like I said throwing in a drawer somewhere or like what do I do with this and I'm very very excited about it I hope that some of you guys um, are inspired by it to create something unique let me know what you guys think about it in the comments if you have any suggestions to me on sublimating with wood and things um I like that more like raw look to it so I know about the heated laminate and the like I forget what it's called, the subby gloss and stuff, which I've heard you have to like, it's really potent and you have to put it in the oven and all that. So I don't want to mess with that. But the heat laminate, the reason I don't, haven't tried that is because of how shiny it keeps it at the end. Um, I have an idea of how I do want to test something for that, but that's just not quite the look I was going for. So this is what I found kind of has been working for me. But if you have any other suggestions, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And yeah, again, give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this project, you enjoyed this content, consider subscribing to me if you're new here. We would love to have you. If you're returning, I love you. I'm going to take you in for a closer look and I'll see you next time.